Hello everyone, Colin Cadet here from Woodwork Web. Today we're going to talk about routers and specifically how to use a router table. There's basically two kinds of routers available. A plunge router like this one, which means the entire body including the bit can plunge into the wood and it also can lock into the wood. Or there's a fixed base router, which means that in order to move the router base and the bit up and down, or the router body up and down, you actually need to move that manually. Now either one of these can be used in a router table and both of them will give satisfactory results. One of the things to keep in mind when using any router, whether you're using it in a table or using it freehand, all router bits rotate counterclockwise. And because of that, you need to make sure that the wood that you're feeding into the bit is going to feed in from right to left. So it's always going to flow in that sort of a direction. Whether the router is in a table or whether you're using it freehand, if you don't feed the wood counter to where it's, it's biting into the wood, if you were to feed it, for example, from this way, you can see that the router bit will actually grab that wood and have a tendency to whip it through. There's a couple of problems with that. First of all, it can make a bad cut. And secondly, it's not very safe to do that, to have your tool shooting wood through on you. In terms of safety using the router, always use the guards because you're dealing with a high speed bit here. And always make sure whenever you're changing a bit that you unplug the router. And of course, you're always going to want to use good eye protection because you've got high speed bits of wood coming off and it's imperative that you protect your eyes from that. Okay, here we are at the router table. Let's talk about bits for a moment. There's basically two kinds of bits available for routers. A quarter inch shank and a half inch shank. And these two bits are exactly the same. The only difference is in the shank size. Some of the bits you will be looking at are only available in a half inch shank. And that's because they are heavy duty bits such as those used in making doors and windows. For lighter duty, the quarter inch shank will work fine. Many routers will come with both half inch and quarter inch collets. If you're buying a good quality router, check to make sure that it has both collets available. In a moment we're going to be installing a bit, but before we do that, let's talk about the principle of a router table. The router, of course, is underneath this plate. In a moment we're going to be installing the router bit. Now everything on the router table is centered to the bit. So this fence, even though it moves around, is always centered to wherever the bit is. Now the reason that that's important is because of this slot. And I want to talk about that slot right now. Most people call this a miter gauge slot. In a router table, we do not recommend using a miter gauge. And the reason for that is because this fence can move around back and forth and when you're using a miter gauge, for example, if you were pushing against this and running through this bit, unless this is absolutely perfect on each side, you have a great risk of either running this piece of wood so that it's going to bind up on this side or that it could be loose on this side. In either case, it's not going to be the good cut that you're going to need from your router. 
So a push block is nothing more than a scrap piece of wood. I like to use three quarter inch and a piece of wood that's absolutely square on the side that's going to run against the fence and be used as a push against the wood. Now when I, I make these, I actually cut out four sides and make sure that they're absolutely square so that I can spin them around when they get worn out a little bit. But the advantage with using a push block is that it always makes sure that your wood is absolutely flat against the bit. But the other big plus is that when you use a push block, it gives the wood that you're feeding through, there's often tear out at the bottom, and it gives some support to that so it reduces the risk of tear out. Okay, let's talk about bits for a moment. In this case, we're going to be installing a half inch round over bit. When you put the bit into the collet, drop it down to the bottom, then bring it back about a quarter of an inch and then just snug up that nut. Then you'll want to tighten that nut down and you're going to want to have that nut fairly tight. Okay, the next thing I want to do is to lower this bit. In my case I can do that from on top the table and I want to make sure that bit, the edge of that bit is absolutely level with the top of the table. And that's that right about there. The next thing I want to do, because this bit has a bearing on it, I want to isolate this bearing so that it's absolutely straight across on the fence. And to do that, I put a straight edge across that, move that fence so that it's just touching that bearing, then snug down both sides of that fence. What that does is it allows the wood to flow from right to left because that's the direction we want the wood to go and all that will touch the wood is the actual bit. This bearing has now been isolated. It really serves no purpose in this application. Okay, let's just go ahead now and run our test wood through the router. There is one other thing that I get asked about quite often. That's using a starter pin on a router table. So let's have a look at that. Okay, using a starter pin is a little object like that. It's a starter pin. And in most router tables, there's a little spot for that to sit vertically in the router table. And the reason you want to use a starter pin is that for objects that have rounded, circular, not lineal, like a, a straight board, but that has curves to it, because you can't run those through the fence, that's what a starter pin is used for. And what it is, what it helps you do is ease your wood into the bit so it's not banging into the bit and then once it's in the bit you can then rotate that through. So let's go ahead now and put a, a round over on this piece of wood using the starter pin. So that's our look at router table basics today.